the speed with which we are watching this market deteriorate. The worst day on Wall Street since the crash of 1987. In leadership or offered environmentally friendly policies and technology. We see this time and time again from BlackRock. They do something that seems like they're moving in the right direction and said that gun manufacturers should do more to protect the lives of the American people. Said these companies about improving safety, but so far, so does its engagement with authoritarian governments. We are unknowingly given BlackRock money, self-imposed mandates to help reduce that over time. In releasing its numbers this morning, shares are down about 1.2 percent. About expectations, it's all about around that business, but uh, seems to be growing. Are you curious about generating passive income through automated trading on Bybit? I've got something interesting to share, and it's completely free. Click on the link below to follow along with my trades, and you won't even need to sit in front of your computer all day. You can also take a look at my monthly trading earnings, which I'm sharing openly, by clicking the link in the description. It's all about making financial gains at your own pace. Check it out. Will the SEC's defeat against Ripple on appeal create a precedent for cryptocurrency companies? In other news, 412 million XRP, worth $213 million, inexplicably migrated between unidentified wallets, causing XRP's trading volume to soar to 11% in just one day. In addition, the price of XRP has returned to the bullish area, putting it on a trajectory towards the highly anticipated $1.40 price goal that was established by well-known analyst Greg. And lastly, how may Charles Gasparino of Fox help conceal the names of dishonest public servants? Follow me through to the conclusion to learn more. The latest developments in the SEC v. Ripple case have sparked further rumors and conjecture. Notably, after the SEC decided to drop the charges against Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson, the cryptocurrency community has been speculating about what the agency may do next in the Ripple lawsuit. The action, in the opinion of many cryptocurrency enthusiasts, lays the stage for a possible settlement or a quicker appeal. The majority of analysts surmise that the SEC quickly filed an appeal against Ripple's success after dropping the charges. Thus, well-known XRP owner Andrew Sparazat questioned founder of crypto law lawyer John Deaton about whether the SEC would establish a standard for the entire crypto business in the event that it lost on appeal. In reply, attorney Deaton stated in court that if the SEC lost its appeal, it would create a precedent that would make the regulator less strong and give cryptocurrency-related businesses more confidence to challenge the Commission's unfavorable enforcement actions. Judge Annalisa Torres, according to Deaton, has already made it clear that the Howey test would be used in light of the pertinent circumstances in order to provide a decision in this instance. Because no other cryptocurrency project has comparable facts, Deaton claimed that SEC may simply claim that the ruling only applies to Ripple and XRP in the event that it loses the appeal. Attorney Deaton, meanwhile, stressed that the SEC cannot file an appeal right away. He did, however, note that an appeal might occur sooner than anticipated in light of the SEC's decision to withdraw charges against Ripple executives. Deaton made these remarks in response to assertions made by Rand Munez, who said that the SEC can now file an appeal right away following the dismissal of charges against Ripple executives. In response, Deaton stated that the SEC cannot file an appeal until the penalty step has passed. By narrating the events during the SEC v. LBRI lawsuit, the pro-XRP attorney offered further context. He stated that the court entered the final judgment on July 11, 2023, after eight months from the date the LBRI judge issued the summary judgment on November 7, 2022. There was more discovery during those eight months, which included deposition testimony, interrogatories, and requests for the production of documents, bank statements, and other records. He added that submitting written briefs and making an oral argument would come next. Even after the court issued the final ruling, LBRI did not file an appeal until September 7, 2023, which is nearly two months later. Attorney Deaton further mentioned that LBRI was first asked to pay a $23 million fine by the SEC. However, during the remedies hearing, the panel ultimately requested a $130,000 fine. It is important to note that by selling XRP to institutions, LBRI violated securities law and may be fined up to $770 million. 
Interestingly, Deaton suggested that LBRI would strive to exempt on-demand liquidity sales and reasonable business costs in order to lessen. The source address was created five days ago with six notable XRP transactions, according to XRP Explorer Bithomp. In the meantime, the 412.33 million XRP received is the only transaction made in the destination wallet, which went online yesterday. Nonetheless, a few users in the cryptocurrency market indicated that two wallets are owned by the Bitfavo exchange. The XRP transaction was notably created on the previous day. The fact that the source wallet moved 510,000 XRP to an address within Bitfavo's control yesterday may be the cause of this conjecture. An ex-user commented on the most recent transaction, saying that this person opens a new wallet, moves all of their assets to it, then submits a strong bid to Bitfavo, and continues the process every few days. Sprinkling in a bit here and there as you go. It's also important to note that Bitvavo has a reputation for transferring XRP between unidentified wallets. The exchange transferred 409 million XRP, or more than $201 million, to an untagged account last week. Notably, this month Whale Alert has recorded significant amounts of XRP tokens entering and leaving exchanges, as well as unknown addresses. XRP whales are valued at $880 million total, or 1.6 billion XRP tokens. Additionally, Ripple, Abit, Bitfavo, Bitstamp, Crypto.com, and Bitso are the cryptocurrency companies driving the notable XRP rise thus far this month. Furthermore, three days after re-entering the region, EGRDD confirmed in a recent post that XRP is still in the bullish zone. It is important to review the analyst's previous analysis when he addressed these XRP price zones in order to fully comprehend his most recent comments. EGRAD pointed out that XRP's price movements historically fit into one of four zones below 58 cents in what he called the color code roadmap. These are the following zones. 35 to 38 cents, wicking 39 to 47 cents, ranging 47 to 51 cents, and bullish 51 to 57 cents. These are the red flag zones. With the regular fluctuations in the market, the price of XRP moves in and out of these zones. The majority of XRP's trading activity since September has occurred inside the range zone and below the bullish zone. From October 9th to October 19th, XRP moved in a range before staging a rebound. With this rally, it returned to bullish territory. In response to this development, A. Greg claimed two days ago that XRP may surge to $1.40, but that this would depend on how the asset's price moved. He disclosed that a weekly full-body closing in the positive zone would be required for XRP. With a current price of $0.05,228, the analyst's most recent report aims to remind his audience that XRP is currently trading within the positive zone. This suggests that XRP is following the filing of a combined amicus brief by the billionaire investors in the lawsuit. Former Ethereum advisor Stephen Naryoff emphasized the need for an army to combat the SEC. Naryoff claimed to have the necessary evidence to back up Cuban and Musk's claims that the SEC is corrupt, as they are doing. But he appealed to prominent cryptocurrency fans, particularly those in the XRP community, to assist him in attracting Musk's and Cuban's interest. In the course of the conversation, Naryoff confronted Fox Business reporter Charles Gasparino, questioning whether he had fired colleague Eleanor Terrett in order to shield those suspected of SEC malfeasance. This offered me the chance to confront Gasparino and inquire as to whether he had closed Eleanor Terrett in order to shield those complicit in this corruption. Nero probed, he also said that he would reveal any media outlet that repressed him in order to shield dishonest officials who falsely accused him in Ripple. Pranariov, if Fox Business decides to defend former SEC Chair Clayton, it will be disgusting. Nario's comments naturally attracted the attention of Gasparino, who called the assertions false. Furthermore, the journalist for Fox Business vowed to sue Nero for his ridiculous conspiracy notion. Interestingly, Bill Morgan, an Australian attorney who has been following the SEC v. Ripple case attentively, responded to Gasparano's statement.
Attorney Morgan questioned the SEC's activities in relation to its lawsuit against Ripple executives Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson in responding to Gasparano's Twitter. It is noteworthy that last week, the SEC unexpectedly withdrew its accusations against Larson and Garlinghouse. The revelations sparked a fresh discussion among supporters of XRP because many legal experts predicted a settlement would soon come to an end. Please make sure you hit the notification bell, subscribe, and like the video. This is a huge assistance for the YouTube algorithm. Additionally, by forwarding this video to as many people as you can, you can aid in enlightening others in the same way that you have been enlightened. Let's spread this news far and wide, guys. Don't miss any of our articles if you are a serious enthusiast of cryptocurrencies. We'll discuss the most recent news that affects our community as a whole when we see you tomorrow.